I'm Ryan. I'm a science teacher. I'm Cheryl, and I slept through science. Each episode will tackle a science question you may have learned in school, but can't quite remember or fully explain. And I'll take the risk of asking the dumb questions so that we can all understand the science we slept through. The bell has rung. Let's get started. Welcome to lesson 21. We are in our biology unit. What wonderful biology question do you have today, Cheryl? Well, I would like to give you a report on penguins today. Penguins? But you penguins. don't like penguins. Because I love penguins. <laughs> oh, that's right. I knew it was one of those two extremes. <laughs> um, penguins are awesome. I have a penguin tattoo. There are 18 species of penguins, but they used to think there were 17 species. And then they realized that there are actually two different kinds. And many of them live in Antarctica, which is really fun because they kind of get their own little continent well it's not so little and they're just like down there doing their thing kind of alone but they're together like holding on the fort down there and they're awesome and that's my story about penguins okay well um a plus on your penguin report <gasps> thank you <laughs> because it was extra credit and i didn't assign it oh okay <laughs> i do have a follow-up question for you though okay you talked about the penguins are kind of alone, but not alone because they're with each other. Yeah. Down in Antarctica. Yeah. Why do you think they're alone down there? I mean, are all animals alone kind of like penguins just in different parts of the world? No. I mean, a lot of the world, there are all sorts of animals living together. But mm -hmm. it seems like in the North and South Poles, it's kind of like solitary, a lot less animals mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, so it seems like it's not even. Animals are not like evenly spaced around the globe. Okay. And why do you think that is? Let's just move into our pre-assessment here. Okay. Why do you think animals are not evenly distributed across the globe? Hmm. Well, I think, I mean, in the cold, in that extreme of cold at the poles, okay, um, it's really ex like difficult living situations, and it feels like it's easier to live closer to the equator where the temperature doesn't flux so much. Like just, and it's just like, I don't know, easier living conditions and now this sounds vague it makes it kind of makes uh -huh. sense in my mind of like oh yeah because of but i think temperature does make a really big difference with what animals are able to survive in an environment um and i don't even know why any animals are at the poles and like why do penguins what's their deal in the first place but as far as <laughs> why there's so many closer to the equator like i don't know that's my main guess is the temperature Okay. And what do you think the temperature does or doesn't do if we want to talk about with the poles? I mean, it gives life, right? Like the sun gives plants life. So there's more to eat there or like there's more shelter because of that, like shade. Um, and then like, because the plants have more life that like, I think probably it benefits the whole food chain. I would guess that then there's like bugs and then there's the animals that eat the bug, you know, et cetera. Um, I also wonder if like the length of the days being more similar during the year helps with like staying alive and being able to survive year round as opposed to like the times of the year where there's like all darkness or all light, like that might be harder for living conditions for animals. And then just like being able to not freeze to death is probably a piece of it too. <laughs> That's probably a plus, not freezing to death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, what about the regions that aren't close? They're not on the equator. Yeah. But they're closer to the equator than the poles. Hmm. What do you think it looks like for number of living things there? Do you still think See, it's less than at the equator? That, okay. My guess would be the equator's the most. Okay. And the farther away you move, the less there are. 
because like okay. Canada, I'm gonna guess might have le- has less than the equator, but more than the North Pole. Okay, that's gonna be my guess. What about that- some place in between? Some place like Canada and it's, the equator. It's like- a spectrum. I'm gonna guess. <laughs> Meaning what? <laughs> the closer you get, the more life there is, and like okay. animal life. Or okay. maybe all sorts of life. Oh, so maybe, maybe it's not just animals? Too. Yeah. That's my guess. The, the closer you get to the equator, yeah. the more types of life you run into. Yes, that's my guess. As usual, you have lots of ideas that are all interconnected to the things that you're asking about. But Yay! The- Yes, but the big key idea with most of everything that we're talking about is one concept that you may have heard of before, you may not have, but even if you haven't, I'll bet it'll make a lot of sense. It's called biodiversity. Okay. Have you heard of that before? Mm, Perhaps. I've heard of those words individually a lot. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. If you had to guess what biodiversity means, what would you guess? That there is a more diverse amount of life. Okay. Yeah. And when you say amount of life, <laughs> how would you would you say that as do you think it's the number of one species the number of types of species all of the above what do you think types because i think that's what diversity is like i don't think that antarctica has a lot of biodiversity because it's just a lot of penguins (laughs) and maybe a few other things maybe some seals and whales and albatrosses and things like that but but yeah but for the most part even though there's a lot of penguins there yes it's not very biodiverse because there aren't a lot of other types of birds. It's just bio. It's just bio, yes. but not diverse. <laughs> There's even, not even a lot of bio down there either. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Biodiversity is, a, uh, and we can actually measure it, but it's the amount of number of different species present in a given area. And you can define that as a square meter or a square kilometer or whatever you want, but you can actually measure it and compare the biodiversity in one location compared to another location. And what you were describing is you thought that the biodiversity is pretty low at the poles And then you said it was a spectrum. And as you get closer to the equator, the amount of biodiversity would increase. Yep. 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 All right. I have a pretty map to show you. (gasps) I love pretty maps. I thought you might. Mm -hmm. Here is a map of the world that is nice and pretty color-coded. Can you see it okay? Yes. What it does is it's it's sort of a style called a heat map. I don't know if you've heard that before. It's yeah. actually not having anything to do with temperature, really. But the color coding, the blues and the cooler colors are represent a lower number, in this case, of species. And the closer you get to red, the higher number of species, so the greater biodiversity you have. Do you want to describe some of the patterns that you see on this map? Well, I think that this map just proves that I'm right. So I feel pretty good. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So what I'm seeing is lots of blues when you look north and when you look south, especially like in the northern part of North America and of Asia. Mm -hmm. And then we get like sprinkling of green kind of throughout the United States, throughout Europe. Um, And then like the top part of Africa is dark blue, which is Mm -hmm. really interesting to me because that is closer (laughs) to the equator than Europe. Yeah, it is. Um, But it's a darker blue than Europe, which is, so it's, Europe is farther away from the equator and yet seems to have a greater biodiversity. Yeah. And then the bottom half of Africa, there's, a lot of green and yellow and then patches of orange and red. Mm-hmm. In South Asia, we get some green and yellow, um, orange and a tiny bit of red. And then South uh, 
America. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know if I would have. Uh, this is interesting. It, I mean, it pretty much looks like you spilled a lot of blood in the northern <laughs> part of South America because of it how does, dark red it? it is. And then the further you go in South America, you get yellow, orange, green, and blue. Yeah, as you go further um, south. Australia is very blue with only a little bit of green on their east coast. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Just all the snakes, I guess, you know, so. <laughs> the snakes That's and what spiders. I'm seeing. And yeah. 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 Well, there are a couple of things that you kind of highlighted that I'd like to talk a little bit more about. The darker spots on the top part of Africa that you said, hey, that yeah. doesn't really follow your pattern. <gasps> oh, wait, but that's a desert. Yeah. Which desert? Mm, well, the one that's in Africa. Um, it's it starts the next. No, it's a large Sahara. There you go. <laughs> I'm like, I know you know this. <laughs> Yeah, so the Sahara Desert is right there. And even though, yeah, it's closer to the equator than Europe is because it's so much hotter and ha doesn't have as much water and all of those other things, it actually has less biodiversity. So the, just the extreme temperatures I was talking about in mm -hmm. Antarctica, but flipped. Yes, that's part of it for sure, definitely. And then what about South America? Do you know what is in that region of kind of the northern part of South America that's so deep red? You said it's like spilled blood. Moisture. Okay. Lots of moisture. So uh -huh. I wonder if that's part of the life giving in addition to the sun. Mm -hmm. There's also something, it's a really big deal that's in, because a lot of that is Brazil and part of that is Ecuador and Peru. The rainforest? Yes. Do you know which one is there? Um, the Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the Amazon rainforest. That's what you're seeing is the amount of biodiversity there in the Amazon rainforest. And that's that being sense. reflected there. Yeah. 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 And it's huge compared to everywhere else in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, in general, it is, it's more concentrated near the equator and less so as you get towards the poles but not perfectly so. It's not a perfect distribution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not quite that spectrum that I was picturing, but it's it's similar. Yes, and part of that's because you have mountain ranges and we have oceans and other bodies of water that all change the characteristics of climate in those different areas and have an effect on that. So that's the first thing, is we've got those different regions on the planet. The second thing is what leads to those different regions of biodiversity. And you did already talk about it. You talked about a lot of things, but I wanna kind of go in order here. Really the key that everything else builds off of is the sun. That makes sense. And you can have the most sunlight, the most direct sunlight, for the most number of hours, most consistently, which are all things you mentioned mm -hmm. on the equator and actually in the area called the tropics. Mm. And you're aware of the tropics? Yes. Okay. Which is between, and I'll be, I'll get really specific here. It's be it's between 23.5 degrees north latitude and 23.5 degrees south latitude. Everything in between those is officially considered the tropics. Oh, I didn't know there was an official mm -hmm. um, description like that. So that's really cool. There is. And at some point, if you are curious as to why it's that exact point, because there is a reason for it, we could talk about that, but that would be a different lesson. <sighs> Fine. I'll write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the sun is the key source of life for all life, almost. There are a few exceptions, but pretty much all life on earth. And you even referenced this as well. The sun primarily gives life and energy to what sorts of living things? Plants. Plants. And plants form the base of the food chain that you talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so if you can have the most sunlight, you can have the most plants. Yeah, that's really true. That's why I wish my house had a south facing window. <laughs> because? 
because the sunlight is coming more from the south because we're in the northern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have more of that sunlight longer during the day if you're facing south. That's right. And so if you've got more sunlight, more direct sunlight, more hours of sunlight, all of that, you can support more plants and a wider variety of plants. Mm. If you have a wider variety of plants, that can support a wider variety of what we call primary consumers, which are the things that eat the plants. The bugs. It Sometimes it's bugs, but it doesn't have to be. Things like cows eat plants. Yeah, I was going to say, it could just be herbivores as exactly. well. Which yep. I instantly then picture dinosaurs that are herbivores, but that's fine. Well, oh. and that too, <laughs> not so much today, but yes, mm-hmm. that too. And then that supports a greater number of things that eat the things that eat the plants and so on. And therefore you can actually support a much wider biodiversity all because of the amount of sunlight that's available to grow the additional number of plants. Temperature also does factor into it, like you mentioned. And yes, it's colder, which means it, it, there are harsher conditions and fewer things are able to live there. But it all comes back to the plants again. Mm. Because Yeah, that's a good point because the penguins have to find fish because they mm-hmm. can't find any plants. Mm-mm. They can't. Yeah. And those fish live on things that are in the ocean. And the ocean is a slightly different ecosystem that, that makes functions sense. a little bit differently. But even that, there are things that migrate and move from areas uh, to different parts of the earth because of what's available and all of that. And if you look, I've got another pretty map for you. It's not quite as pretty though. Yay. This is a great time to also mention that if anyone's listening to our podcast, you can actually jump over to YouTube and see these pretty maps that Ryan's talking about for yourself. Exactly. This one even has a wonderful title on it. Global biodiversity, species numbers of vascular plants. Don't worry about the vascular Mm. part. Just think of it as plants. And if you look at the general patterns here, how would you describe the patterns here compared to the previous map that we looked at? They are pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're not exact. Nope. There are some spots where it seems like there's more plant diversity than there is um, overall biodiversity. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, Europe mm-hmm. looks like it has some. Wait, what does the blue mean? The blue in this. Oh, that's true. These colors are a little bit are a little bit different. If I scroll down a little bit here, you can see that the lighter colors starting with kind of a tannish, yeah. those are the lowest amount of biodiversity. And then it goes up through sort of a slightly darker tan or peach almost, and then into sort of a greenish, and then it goes into the blues, and then from the blues into the purple, and then into the red. Got it. So yeah, in Europe there, it looks like there's more plant diversity than maybe animal diversity. Could be. In that area. Um, same with New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Wait, is that New Zealand? Yeah, that's New Zealand. New Zealand's down here. Nope. I was thinking uh, Papua, Papua New, New Guinea. Guinea. Yeah. Yeah, Papua New Guinea looks like it has more plant biodiversity. Mm-hmm. And same a little bit with, well, with Mexico. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like the southern part of Mexico. Looks like it has a lot. But in yeah. general, it's pretty similar. There's that harsh line in Africa. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like the spot where it seems like there's the harshest of lines Yeah, where the Sahara is. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) See, we're getting some geography in here too. I know it's pretty fun. (laughs) (laughs) But as you see, yes, it's not perfect one for one. Very rarely are things perfect in in biology, but it's a general, it's kind of that same pattern and that same trend as far as where you see a lot more biodiversity in plants you also tend to see a lot more biodiversity overall that makes sense yeah and then the last sort of thing is what you kind of started with which is the temperature and yes temperature is also definitely a factor when it is colder that makes a lot of things a lot harder but even the temperature is ultimately caused by the amount of sunlight that you can have So it still is connected to sunlight, 
And as you mentioned, your favorite animal lives in one of the most extreme parts of the entire planet. Yeah. That means it's not impossible for things to live there. Well, that's actually why penguins are black and white is because black absorbs heat and white reflects it. And so if they are cold, they turn their backs to the sun. And then if they're oh. too warm, they turn their fronts to the sun. Although I don't know when in Antarctica they're ever too warm. <laughs> but yeah, there's there another go. penguin fun fact for you for additional extra credit. Perfect. <laughs> nice job. Nice job. Well, that's sort of the way it works, but or organisms, animals, and plants can adapt to live in a lot of different temperatures and environments. So it is possible for them to be in those other places. But yeah, the key piece there is the sun for the plants based on the food chain that it can support all the rest of those organisms and therefore a greater biodiversity. That's so cool. And now it's time for your quiz. Uh, but I already gave you like all the penguin facts. So I feel like we can call it even. And I'm going to go. Well, class isn't over yet. So oh, you it. can't. And this <sighs> isn't a quiz about penguins. Oh, dang, man. What's the point of any of this then? <laughs> I mean, it was oh, your idea. No. <laughs> Did I make it too real like your job? Or your stuff? <laughs> that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. All right, let's move on to the quiz, shall we? <laughs> what is biodiversity? It is the amount of living things in a designated region, amount of different living things. Yep. Yes, great. And we use the fancy science word species. Oh, yes. Species. But yes, different living things. Yeah, absolutely. What are the three main influences of biodiversity on Earth? Ooh, three. We talked about three. Well, it all comes back to the sun. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the overarching, but I feel like it, mm -hmm. don't know if that counts as one of the three. It, it does. does count? Okay. Yes. Sun, plants, and temperature? You got it. Yay! <laughs> Which of those influences is the most important or foundational and why? Well, plants, I could say sun or plants because okay. plants don't grow without the sun. So that's tricky. Okay. But I would say plants as far as they're the bottom of the food chain. Mm -hmm. And without food, you just won't have any other living things there. But then the sun causes those plants to grow. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Yeah, I, I don't know how to answer <laughs> further than that then because it feels like a trick question. And I don't know if it is or not. Well, it wasn't intended to be a trick question. However, something that sometimes my students do struggle with is when I ask questions like this, sometimes I, I don't care about the answer. I care about the explanation. I respect that so much. <laughs> I love so that. Whether, whether you said the sun or you said plants, what, I'm, what I was hoping for you to say, and you did, was the fact that it forms the basis of the food chain. And you could connect that to the sun or you could connect that to the plants, which again are connected back to the sun. But either way, you're showing the same understanding no matter which one you pick. And that is why I hate multiple choice or true false questions because mm -hmm. I want to explain myself mm -hmm. and my thinking. So I appreciate that. Yep. And that's why even though students in general prefer multiple choice because they feel like it's easier. I tend to prefer short answer, not like essay, but short answer because yeah, I can see an explanation and I can see what they're actually thinking. And even if they have a part that's wrong, if I see all this other stuff that's right, I can give them some credit for that. I love that. Yeah. Are you ready for your last question? Yes. Okay. It's an application question. Okay. <laughs> You're preparing yourself. <laughs> yeah. Where is the greatest biodiversity on Earth and why is it there? It's in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a rainforest that's also 
on the equator. So it has it has a lot of sun, consistent mm-hmm. sun, mm-hmm. and it has a lot of water, and those plants have to get watered. Mm-hmm. And the animals need to be able to drink, too. Probably more important that the plants get watered, but <laughs> that's my answer. Okay. Yeah. Great. The only thing that I would add would be something that you kind of already talked about a little bit, but that when you have that huge amount of plants from the sunlight and the water, that can also support a huge number of animals. Mm. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. But you got it. Yay. I, I did have one other thing I wanted to mention, Cheryl. Okay. When you were talking, we were talking about organisms adapting to different locations yeah. around the earth. And I know you already know this, but penguins actually, as a, an overall species, have done a great job of living in a wide variety of climates and regions. As a matter yeah. of fact, when I was in the Galapagos Islands, I got to see the northernmost penguins that actually live in the Galapagos Islands. There are Galapagos penguins. You got to see a Galapagos penguin? I did. Oh my gosh, was it amazing? I mean, I think it wasn't as amazing for me as it would have been if it were you, but yes, it was pretty cool to see a penguin just out there in the wild hanging out in a tropical region. Oh, I love that so much. (laughs) That's so sweet. I would have brought one back, but it was illegal. Well... I guess I understand. <laughs> yeah. And you and I are both like fans of not overpacking when we travel. So right. like, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess I get that. But yeah. there's a penguin in the wild. I want to see a oh, penguin yes. in the wild. I've only seen a penguin in the zoo. I mean, I can show you video that I took of the penguin in the wild. I would love to see that. Okay. Well, this is going to be way less helpful for our listeners who can't actually see these things. Well, they can hear me react. (laughs) They can definitely hear you react. Are you ready, Cheryl? I'm so ready. All right. The penguin's off over there on the right-hand side. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. There he is. He's just hanging out. He's just hanging out right there. Oh, he's just having a good day. What freaking smart penguins to go move in the sun. I love it. There he is, a little bit closer. Oh, he's just watching the waves as they're splashing. Yep, he was just hanging out there. He was like, oh, look, there's some people. Boy, do they look weird. Oh. Oh! (laughs) There you go. Just Thank one, you for just one penguin. That with me. He's so cute. <laughs> You're welcome. I think I we uh, are now out of time for okay. the lesson today. But if you go ahead and pack up your stuff, get ready for my closing remarks. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at I Slept Through Science or on Twitter at Slept Science. If you have dumb science questions like I do, please send them to us. You can email us at isleptthroughscience at gmail.com, or you can even send us a voice memo and we'll play it on the podcast. Please rate and review our podcast to tell other people what you think about it. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss an episode and share about our podcast on social media. Thank you to Beth Reed Miller for the artwork. You can check out more of Beth's artwork at Beth is something. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Ah! The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you.